Hello everyone, I'm Sandeep Kulkarni from Moneyworks for You. You'll uh, know me from my Twitter handle Moneyworks for You. I've been an active on Twitter for last eight years, and I've done some twenty-six thousand posts on Twitter. This recent tweet that I did about the uh, man Nifty correcting by forty percent was my most viral tweet ever. That reminded me of a blog post written by Morgan Housel about how facing is not so smart, whereas optimism sounds uh, obvious to the rest. How pessimism uh, sounds like someone like to wear, wear optimism down, sounds like someone like a sales pitch. Let me tell you that it was supposed to be a spoof on power bears. These power bears uh, connect a few dots on chart, read uh, a chart pattern, and make a dose bear prediction of 30, 40, 50 percent correction on uh, it dies, which is equal to the way 2008 or 2000 uh, kind of a market scenario. And they create padding among interest uh, retail investors. So uh, I'm sure we must have seen uh, many such uh, posts on charts uh, on Twitter and other social media platforms. So this uh, the, the idea of this video is to create an awareness about uh, how to want this kind of charts or these kind of tweets, uh, how to sidestep this kind of chart patterns. Basically, there are three types of chart crimes. First is what I call as putting the cart before the horse. If a chart pattern is suggesting it, if a head and shoulder chart pattern is suggesting that the price is going to be zero or negative, uh, does that mean that price is going to zero? We need to understand what is the cause and effect here. Does the price move on chart because a pattern is suggesting so, or is the pattern created because price is printed on the chart? We need to understand the what is the cause and what is the effect here. Just because the chart pattern is suggesting a big drawdown, doesn't mean that uh, price is going to fall. There has to be a trigger for the price to go down. It's not going to go down just because the chart pattern has split around the chart. And over the last many years, we have seen that uh, some of the biggest not on the biggest correction happened because of some surprise we were not on. Uh, a lot of us, all of us remember the COVID uh, correction, which was a big surprise. It was the biggest correction and it was one of the biggest surprise that we had. Uh, some of you might remember uh, how the subject related stocks were retained in 2016 when more decision was announced. Um, you might remember how when VFCs and housing were not corrected to on AD where INFS went back out. So these kind of surprise events uh, create meltdown. What is known and what is talked about in the markets and what is very well anticipated. anticipated. These kind of events actually do not uh, bring out a major peak correction. And chart patterns do not predict a 50-40% correction. There has to be a trigger for a big correction drive. Small corrections here and there, they happen all the time. But for a big window to happen, there has to be a trigger. The second uh, type of uh, chart crime is what we call as correlations are not works. In this kind of a uh, chart crime, what they do is they plot two different variables along with each other on a safe chart and they try to make a relationship between those two and try to say that movement in one uh, variable can predict the movement in the other variable. Many of the types it may be true sometimes, but for often it is not true. Let's take one example, okay, so last year, uh, 7, 8, 9 years at least we have seen how this chart about how uh, US security is right the US equity market. Now, uh, but the data is actually quite contrary to all that claim about how US equity market has been developed by the grid. Uh, from uh, November of 2021 till June of 2022, when Fed was still infusing liquidity in the market, yeah, U.S. equity markets went down. The Nasdaq was down some 30-35 percent. But uh, once it started to withdraw the liquidity from June 2022, U.S. markets started to stabilize, and they've actually gone up. Uh, in the last one year, it has been one of the best performing markets. It has gone up some 30-35 percent when Fed has been aggressively withdrawing liquidity in the market. So this this was uh, against the claim that the uh, liquidity has been dying in the market. What actually the market is earning for? If you look at last uh, 12, 13 years uh, data, uh, there has been a very, very impressive and very high growth, uh, which is tough from US technology stock. What is the little span uh, stocks that we know? So, uh, if instead of we have to draw a correlation, probably we have to draw a correlation between earnings growth and uh, the NASDAQ. Uh, you know, it it uh, like the correlation between liquidity and uh, US equity market is uh, totally incorrect. There is absolutely no correlation between a liquidity infusion and what is happening in the US equity market. So, second chart crime, as I said, is correlations are not causation. We need to be discerning about whether if the two things are moving together, whether one is going because of other, 
Or it is just the correlation coincidence that both of them are going together. That we need to understand. Third uh, type of uh, chart crime is what I call the sampling error. In sampling error, uh, what happens is uh, the person who is presenting a chart, he show how one particular variable uh, was present uh, during the uh, big corrections like what happened in 1987 where US market corrected 25%, 22% in one day. Again, uh, it was present during a dot-com crash also, it was present in 2008 crash also. So, uh, it, it starts to accept to us like uh, whenever we, uh, this kind of variable uh, moves, uh, it will actually, uh, we get a similar kind of a correction. That is actually an incorrect conclusion to draw. Whenever we look at any kind of a data, number of observations that we get has to be large enough to draw a proper conclusion. Otherwise, it is it's prone to what we call a sampling error. So, uh, the null pep, having only three or four observations over multiple decades is not good enough data for us to draw any conclusion on basis of which we can do, take any kind of a portfolio risk. That, that is something that we need to understand. The number of samples uh, that we see in data, that has to be very large. Illusion based on which we can take it, we get our decision. Okay, uh, so let's uh, sum it up. Chart patterns uh, need to be confirmed by fundamentals. Charts do not create market movements. This is the other way around. Market movements actually create charts and chart patterns. We need to understand. Secondly, correlations are not correlation. Just because two things move together doesn't mean that they move because of each other. That is something that we need to understand. And thirdly, when we look at any kind of a data, the sample size has to be large enough for us to draw a conclusion based on, on the basis of which we can take any kind of a decision. So that's it guys, uh, uh, if, you, if you understand these three things, I think uh, you'll be able to sidestep a lot of uh, mistakes that happen when we uh, look at these kind of charts. Thank you, thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful.